so much for joining us today. Of course, it, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me, Michael. The, the series is a Pure Flick series. It's called A Thousand Tomorrows. A Thousand Tomorrows. Uh, Rose, you play uh, Allie Daniels, uh, which is based, of course, on a Karen Kingsbury book. It's my understanding that you have a passion and a love for horses. Um, is that one thing that kind of attracted you to this project? Oh, it absolutely is. You know, I, I actually grew up barrel racing, which is the sport that Allie Daniels competes in in the story. And I, so I grew up barrel racing. I have multiple barrel horses. And, you know, I ended up getting out of barrel racing at about 16 or 17 and getting into another equestrian, Western equestrian sport. But yes, that was very attractive to me when I read it. I read that there was a barrel racer and a bull rider. And I was just like, oh my gosh, my heart, this is exactly what I've always dreamed of doing. And it was just such a dream to get to work with the animals again. Yeah. yeah. What else, what else attracted you to it? I'm sure you haven't ac accepted every single horse project out there, but uh, are there other themes and uh what, what else did you like about the, the the project absolutely yeah you know I, I i loved there's there's this theme throughout the entire thing about you know really having faith even when there really isn't a lot of room to have faith and mm -hmm. that was really important to me because it really seemed like this completely hopeless situation that that ali and cody the uh the leads of the of the series are in and yet they manage to have faith and hope and it's a struggle and it's really hard and it's it's very realistic and it's it's not sugar-coated and there you know there there are some some difficulties that they have to overcome but it is a story of of faith and a story of leaning into that even though it seems like all hope is lost that there's still a little hope left and that even if you are beyond healing the lord can still heal you and i really loved that that idea yeah uh, let's go back to the horse thing real quick before I let yeah. before I a different theme. Um, did, did you guys, did your family have horses? I mean, how, how did you even get involved in horses? Because not, not everybody has horses around. I mean, what, what, what happened there? Yeah. So my, my mom actually grew up doing the same thing that I did. She grew up rodeoing, barrel racing, that kind of thing. And so, uh, before I was even born, we owned horses. We lived on a ranch and my my mom when when i was born she was like this girl is going to ride before she rides a bicycle so indeed i did and that was just kind of kind of my childhood was was horses it was really hard work it is not glamorous as people think it is not glamorous how we make it in the show or in the movies like it's just not and it it was it really taught me the value of of hard work of respect and trust in someone else and that you can't just be a bully you can't push a horse around they will push you right back and so it just taught me a lot of valuable life lessons that i'm really appreciative for how did you guys balance uh, safety of the actress with uh i guess realism on the set I i'm assuming that a few of those scenes it's somebody else depicting you. Is that is that correct? Yes. So you come and not on the horse other times. Yes. So I definitely have a stunt double because you know as much as I begged them to let me do all of my own stunts, it's just not safe. You know, if something were to happen, then then it puts production in a bind. So you know, we had to be really respectful of that. But we had such wonderful wranglers and wonderful stunt coordinators. I can't say enough good things about them. There was never a moment where I felt unsafe, and I think the rest of the the rest of the cast could say the same. That we always felt protected. We always felt like uh, like our animal handlers and our stunt doubles and everyone else around us had it under control and there was never any fear of of being harmed by these animals and they were such great animals too you know the the animal that um the horse that i that i rode for the show uh i honestly never even got his name because they were like no he's ace now he's th this is his name his, he is ace he is this character and man did he play his role perfectly and i tried so many times to buy that horse because i was in love with him but <laughs> they sadly said no that's funny. Uh, so there's a few other uh, films that you've been in that people might recognize. Um, Surprised by Oxford, of course. Uh, Finding You, which is one of my favorite rom-coms or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> whatever category that is, I enjoyed that one. Did you grow up with with the desire to, to act? I mean, were you a five-year-old wanting to be in the movies? I think I never really realized it, but yes, because I I was one of those kids that ran around filming backyard movies and I was obsessed with books and still am. And so I knew I wanted to be in storytelling in some form or fashion. I thought I wanted to be an author and I really leaned into that, even though I wrote all these scripts and, you know, performed all of these 
home movies and things like that. And I, I ended up actually seeing a small production that took place on my parents' ranch because uh, the, the producer was a family friend and he called my dad and said, hey, how would you like to, uh, to be an executive producer without putting any money in? Just let us use your ranch. And so I got to see that for the first time at about, you know, 12 or 13 years old, something like that. And I saw that and was just blown away. And I had no idea that there was even this possibility that I could get into this world. And so that really opened doors for me. And and I I realized that that was, that was what I wanted to do. And that was the the mode of storytelling that I really wanted to, to travel into. One of the first um, movies that I recognized uh, when I was looking at your IMDb page was, um, Oh goodness, it's the the name escaped me. Um, it's the movie about the girl, the 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 young lady who was um, killed on, on on a school shooting. Mm, um, I'm not ashamed. Yeah. 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 Um, how did you break into to movies? Then was that your was that your first, you know, break or whatever? That pretty much was. There was there was another small film that I had a non speaking role in, and I'd done plenty of short films and things like that. But that was my first opportunity. I had a wonderful. Um, modeling coach who really helped me get set up there. And she said, hey, they just need someone to come in for one line. Do you think you can do it? And I was like, yes, please bring me in. So I got to do that. And I'm really honored to have been a part of the project. I had some great memories from it and it was such a powerful story to be telling. So I'm really honored to to have been a small part of it. You've kind of found your, your niche here in terms of most of the movies you've done are what we would call inspiring films or family films, some faith films as well. Are there certain types of projects that you're attracted to more than others? Definitely. I, I want audiences, when they watch something that I'm in, to walk away with a sense of um, inspiration and hope. I don't want them walking away saying, oh, the world is really a dark place. I want them to walk away with, with mm. this idea that that faith can conquer all. And, and there is there is such a thing as... Um, you know, as, as the Lord working miracles. And that's something that I really wanted, you know, I, I even though I've, I've done um, plenty of films that aren't faith-based, I, I do enjoy the faith-based ones as well. I think that they're very important and basically just whatever film I'm in, I just want to make sure that, that audiences don't walk away feeling gross. They walk away feeling inspired. You uh, are also working um, on a couple of future projects. One is called The Shift um, and you have your hand, I think, and uh, producing, I think that's what the title is, uh, a, a project as well. Do you see your future in, in acting or in producing, directing, or in a little bit of both? Uh, definitely a little bit of both. I, I love writing so much and I love, I, I would love to become a producer someday. That's definitely my goal. If I could have it my way, I, I hope to one day be able to write, produce and act in my own things and, and hire a cast that is just outstanding. And I've come across so many different projects where, where I, I read a book or something like that. And I, I'm like, wow, this is the, you know, this is, this is such a great story. It has to be told, but I'm not the right person to be the actress in this. And there has to be a way to get that done. And so I'm, I'm hoping to one day be able to produce and, and, uh, you know, I'm on my way to writing and working on a show right now, uh, as a writer. So this is, uh, it's definitely a dream and I hope it's a possibility here pretty soon, but that's my goal. We've been talking to Rose Reed, who stars in the new Pure Flix series, A Thousand Tomorrows, which is based on a Karen Kingsbury book. Rose, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Okay.